This is the new hoodoo. I'm Hallie Q. Hannah, and this is a podcast that invites you to join us, two Mississippi mystics and real life sisters, as we share the ways we use our intuitive gifts, spiritual tools, and ancestral spiritual lineage to create an intentioned, abundant life. Are you longing to initiate, cultivate, or evolve your spirituality by reconnecting to your ancestral heritage? If you want to create a holistic spiritual lifestyle that respects your modernity, uniqueness, but also embraces eclecticism, you are in the right place. We remember what it was like to kick our way out of the broom closet, and we know that sometimes it feels really lonely out there for new mystics, witches, and hoodoos. So know this, today and in this moment, you are a part of our sisterhood. So brew a cup of tea, let's light our candles, and make a little magic here in our very own charmed corner of Beyonce's internet. This week, we're going to break down the sexy and significant differences between talismans and amulets and discuss our favorite reasons and ways to imbue these magical adornments with our intentions. The lovely pieces that we choose to decorate the temple of our bodies are already so powerful. In all probability, you've already been doing some very subtle magic and casting sweet little spells each time you slip on a lucky ring or attach a protective charm to your favorite necklace. Go ahead and drag out that jewel box, no matter large, how small, how modest or grand. Welcome to this week's discussion of sacred adornments. Y'all, there's no way we could could skip over doing an episode on what Andy and I and what one of my favorite Twitter creators call sacred adornments, basically amulets and talismans, right? Like magical wearable art or magical or hoodoo charms that are worn to either A, ensure or increase spiritual power. That's what a talisman normally is or ward off evil and to protect us from outside unseen or what we know is a malicious force, an amulet. I think it's important for us to talk about this because it doesn't matter who we are, gender, like orientation, race. We, you know, we we suit up for battle. We choose, you know, we choose certain things to um, adorn or ornament ourselves. And for some of us, they have very, very deep, true meaning and power. So I also feel that when it comes to our spiritual practices and our magic, you know, amulets, like talismans, necklaces, earrings, like hair combs, whatever, you know, whatever you use, whatever you call them. They are so accessible. They're so affordable. We all like certain types. And if you want to go a little bit deeper in your spiritual practice, you can, you know, you can imbue these with power. Some of us have things that have been passed down to us from our culture, from our lineage that are important to us. Sometimes we like to wear certain symbols, like certain colors. So thank you all for joining us for this uh, conversation on sacred adornments. And of course, we had to have this conversation because Andy is a silversmith. Like she's not just a chandler. She's a silversmith. Andy. Yeah. Andy, why do you think it's important for us to jump into this? So what's what's your half of our why today? I think of it more of the standpoint of as divine beings, right? We are already adorning ourselves. Like most of us already have some type of relationship with jewelry. It was so funny. I thought about you. I thought about you. And I thought about, oh gosh, I thought about, I was just teaching a class in my regular muggle job where I'm a corporate trainer. And we do this activity where everybody uses this presentation to introduce themselves, right? And tell their story. And they have six pictures and they talk about it. And and my homegirl, she's a brown sister. She's Latina. And she was, she talked about this necklace that was super special to her. And she was just like, you know, I'm Latina. I wear a lot of gold. Like we usually have a lot of gold necklaces. And it's so funny because she's in this mixed group of folks and she's really trying to talk about like, why is this gold necklace so important to me? And really trying to take this whole big, huge conversation about her culture, what adornment means to her culture and like squeeze it into this two minute in- introduction. And just to look on my face just goes, remember, and you know, I make notes. So each one of my participants as they share to kind of start building relationships, I put on a note on there, talk to her about jewelry, right? Because no matter whether it's our culture, whether it's something that is just simply significant to us because somebody gave it to her because that particular necklace, like a grandmother gave it to her, whether or not it has religious or spiritual meaning to you, it is something that we take the effort to physically put on our person because it has a certain relationship to us, right, as a being. I try to have a tendency to think of it as more than just a conversation around spirituality, but really as human beings, why are we gravitate? Why do we gravitate toward taking certain metals out of the ground and putting them on our person and making making ourselves shiny or attractive 
or to, to others. And really, I think of it as an extension of our natural bodies recognizing that, yes, there are certain stones, there are certain metals that actually, just like in science, have certain properties that can amplify, that can, you know, have an impact that can actually, you know, you know, I'm an alchemist, you know, my tarot card is a magician that actually can impact how we interact with each other and ourselves. And then on a different layer as an artist, we actually can use these different, you know, extensions of nature to actually not only express ourselves, but to also express our spirituality, express our beliefs, right? So, th- so that's kind of where I focus on inten- you know, intentionality and how I feel about spiritual jewelry. I think of it as this, this kind of, um, universal way, um, that we express how we connect both to the earth with it, which is a spiritual practice as indigenous people, but also how we use elements of the earth, right? And change and transform those to communicate with each other and by and through each other. Um, So I, I think it's really cool. Personally, for me and my culture, you know, as an indigenous person, beading, how we braid, You know, those types of even like putting certain elements, wood, feathers, like incorporated actually into clothing and jewelry has a huge significance for our culture. How we represent animals, community through the artwork that's actually pictured on our clothes is super important. As an African-American, when you go back to us, you know, in our culture that we have with hoodoo through slavery, right? Our jewelry, the things that we could manage to keep, cowrie shells, bits of twine, thread, things like silver dimes that are hold punched through that we wear around our ankles for protection, you know, things like that. They're all spiritual mojo bags, right? They're all really an extension of spiritual jewelry and adornments, our bone sets that we use in divination, right? Where we use pieces of jewelry and things that we've collected as parts of those sets. Those all are adornments. Um, when you think about our African roots, right? The whole how do I explain it? Like even the whole craft of blacksmithing came from Africa, right? The idea that you could take metal from the earth and put heat to it, hammer it into something to smelt something. Um, When you look at Latino culture and, and how we use gold and brass and metals to not only adorn, but to decorate and celebrate our spiritual icons, our, where we lived, each other, is a huge part of our culture. It's how we communicate and connect even to our deities, right? So it's something that as an artist, I've always appreciated. So I pull from my own background. I pull from the background of other cultures through jewelry to celebrate that. Now, on a personal level, you know me, girl, as we are trying to find ourselves as spiritual beings... I know I, you know, we talked about this on different episodes about the industry and actually me learning metalsmithing and like gemstoning and you learn how this industry works. There also was a point for me of just personal. I didn't see jewelry and things that reflected my beliefs and what I like to wear out there either. So very much like my candles, it was also a part of me saying, yeah. There's there's something out there missing and I need to fill this gap for myself. And hey, maybe other people would like to wear this too. As you know, someone listening that, you know, maybe new, like maybe new to their spiritual practice, been wearing, you know, we've been, you know, wearing these sacred adornments, jewelry, earrings, combs, you know, and even some of the things I was doing to like research this, like when we talk about, you know, amulets and talismans or these, you know, these magical things where they're jewelry, you know, they can even be objects. Like, you know, there are people that considered like anything that's like bringing luck to you or power to you can look like very, you know, can look very different. Um, You may already have something that is, you know, very powerful Mm -hmm. for you, or you may want to buy something. So I want to know from you, Andy, as someone, you know, if somebody in the beginning, what do you think about, and they want to experiment with making a sacred adornment, like they want to, you know, they want to make something or they want to, you know, try to infuse their or imbue their magic, their spirituality into an object. What do you, what's your, what do you recommend that people do? Like, how do you feel about buying something and charming it versus kind of making it, putting it together yourself and charming it? What do you recommend folks? Like if they were just starting, just wanting to play around with this a little bit or experiment. I think that you need to approach this just like you do your magic. And this will also sit, you know, will establish you in your spiritual practice. First, start with your intentions. What is it that you are intending to do? Because a lot of us that are witches, we're neurodivergent. We walk into a gym store. We're like, oh, my God, yes, I need all of it. You don't. You don't need all of it. You don't. 
what are your intentions? So if I'm sitting down saying, I want to get into spiritual jewelry, I, I see this need. Maybe I just love jewelry, but I'm also now a spiritual person. I want to, I want to understand this right before I go and buy 20, you know, gemstone bracelets and don't understand what it's about. I would start with, what are your intentions? For me, it was about expressing the things that I was coming to understand about spirituality and some of the symbology, but being able to express who I was. I didn't see a lot of typical run-of-the-mill jewelry that expressed who I was. So my intention started with, first of all, okay, uh, there's an outward expression. Then that's separated from the fact that there's a whole different type of jewelry that is prescriptive. What do I need? Right. There's a way that I like to express myself and show something on an outward way or right. Or I'm trying to push out a certain energy. And then there may be energy that I'm trying to receive for myself. So just like any spell, just like any ritual that you're going to start, any practice you're going to undertake, start with what your intentions are. Right. Because that's going to help lead you toward the path of which, which you should be looking at. Metals are imbued with certain properties metaphysically, right? That, I, you know, and I was unaware of this, like, you know, silver and is more of, it's an emotional conduit. It's kind of a representative moon energy of water mm-hmm. energy, right? It has a calming grounding effect. I was always drawn to sterling silver and I didn't understand why. Well, I'm a fire sign. Now yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. Like for me to always be burning hot all the time, I have a very strong moon signature, right? Like especially the Sagittarius, like I'm always teetering on the brink of, of, yeah. you know <laughs> what I mean? So I down. need, so Just- the, <laughs> Alec is laughing because she knows me. <laughs> On my slide. T- it's so funny because that's why we need, that's why it's so important to connect to intuition. We don't know why. We have no idea why, but sometime around the time we were teenagers. No, you were probably still a little bit younger. Our mom started wearing a lot of silver. We became like attracted to it and seeing it. It was tinkly. Like, and of course, our nature is so hot. So that's why intuition is important because there was something inside of Andy saying, look at that. Maybe your ass could use that. Be be dazzled by it. Put it on you. It might feel cool. It might help you calm the fuck down. You're traumatized. It might help. And not to mention Native <laughs> American jewelry specifically. Indi- I, I'm going to stop saying Native American. That's a terrible term. Indigenous jewelry, right? Like I, That also spoke to me because of the use of symbology in jewelry. Egypt, Egyptology always spoke to me that way and commit like the, the whole fact of hieroglyphics that symbols can be infused on the metal to communicate as well, too, was something that was always drawn to me across different cultures as well, too. So as as you begin to look into yourself. So, again, when I say intentions, I think your shadow work plays along with that, too. And we've talked about this. As you're getting to know yourself and you're starting to ground yourself and you're starting to grow in your power, you'll you'll start to understand what it is to be drawn to things. If you've ever been to a crystal shop and said, okay, I need something for something, you know, and someone goes, oh, well, what speaks to you? That's kind of what they're talking about. They're talking about that kind of inner intuition that I used to, you know, I used to use this analogy with people that I love that were new to understanding this concept, it used to be all of these. I used to explain to them kind of like, you know, when a truck backs up, there's a beeping to tell everybody that warns you like, OK, or everybody around me, be careful. This track is truck truck is backing up. Your inti- intuition feels like that. It's almost like a warning mechanism to you. Right. That can either be a warning or it can have some warm, happy feelings around drawing you to things. So if there are certain things like how, like you said, like since your childhood you've been drawn to. There's certain jewelry that you like, right? Halakie's a real sunny, bright, sunshiny person, like golds, citrines, those kinds of things, bloodstones, those all speak to her. Very much as a part of her sunshiny, kind of like bright, big ocean type kind of energy. I'm a little different. I have a Scorpio ascendant placement along with my Sagittarius. So even though I have this bright outward personality, I have a lot of... (laughs) a lot of dark you know i have i have i have an other aspect to my nature so you know darker stones for me like i love turquoise because it's a communication stone it's a water stone i'm draw, i'm drawn to you know it's funny because my zodiac placement really doesn't like a lot of emotions but yet you see my magic for to achieve balance draws me toward a lot of water-based stones and a lot of emotionally based stones because mm-hmm. that's really what i'm good at i'm a i'm a healer that's a can do it to helping people understand their emotional state so you yeah. will notice that you are drawn to those types of things now there are times when you need 
things, right? Like that's understanding you in spiritual jewelry. I think there are times when you want to, you know, use the properties of certain jewelry um, or you want to amplify or tell a story. I think that's another way that you can use jewelry too. So hopefully that answered your question. I talk about me a lot when I explain those things because I think you could take yourself and once you start looking at these things, like what am I drawn to? What do I like to wear? If you're one of those folks that are Mm -hmm. constantly matching what you wear to kind of your jewelry, to what you wear. When you start to slow down and ask yourself and you become a spiritual person and you're asking yourself, it kind of goes hand in hand. You'll start asking yourself, why am I wearing this? Like I went through this phase where I was kind of like, why am I wearing this? I don't even like this. Why am I presenting this kind yeah. of jewelry? Like this doesn't even speak to me. Like I've been wearing this because people have yeah. told me to wear these whole types of things. So also know that jewelry is also a way for you to kind of, be, it's it's not fixed, right? I think that's another reason why we as human beings move toward jewelry, right? Like we take clothes on and off. That's a way that we express ourselves. I think jewelry is another way to do that. And, and yeah. it's mutable, right? I, for me, I change personalities a lot. That's who, that's who I am. It's kind of part of me being an artist and being creative. So I like that jewelry also allows you to do that too, right? You can transform yourself with jewelry too, which I think is really Mm -hmm. cool. You can also draw people's eyes and to certain, do you know what I mean? You can draw people in and attract people in certain ways. Oh God. Now, if you want to talk about the uses, attraction, love and sex work. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. So that's a question I have. I think if you're at the beginning or you're just starting to get into this like spirit life and like spirit journey, like whatever your practice is, where you're coming from, I would I would go ahead and do a little inventory of what I already got. Like, what do I really love? What makes me look good? Like, what yeah, makes me let's shine? Yeah, start with what you already have. Yeah. When you said that, I was like, well, you know, where should I begin? Clean your shit. Yeah, just go. Clean your <laughs> go shit. Go through everything. Now that you are a spiritual person <laughs> and you know that all these things hold intention, go to your house, get everything in your jewelry box. Yeah. Find how it should yeah. be cleaned and clean it off. Yeah. I would also If s- you brought it somewhere, when you purchase it from a store. Yeah. I tell people like before I incorporate jewelry and, and, and I tell people it doesn't always necessarily have to be with Florida water and these types of things. You can start doing it mentally. Mm-hmm. You can cleanse yeah. things. Yeah. You can smoke cleanse things if you don't know how. But there's very few things because in my house, I'm burning incense so much. Like I, I, I literally burn sage in my room all the time and around my jewelry. So it's kind of constantly getting smoke cleans. However you want to do it. We're trying to cleanse that energy, don't we? <laughs> we try to. Oh, when they that find that half of my lungs is filled up with with oh, non trauma incense, our walls, girl. our walls may not even be the color we think they are. Like I'd be looking at the walls, people, I'm like, how many? If you have one of those yeah. double doors where one of them never opens, and you really want to know how deep your life is, open that door that never opens and look at what the carpet looked like underneath that strip. That lets you know how spiritual <laughs> you are. I bet you ain't as spiritual as me. <laughs> These layers of layers of ash and soot. Andy, I would. This is excellent. This is an excellent recommendation. I also want to say, as you're doing this inventory and this cleansing that Andy has recommended, because what a beautiful ritual, Andy. Even as a way of doing something practical that is spiritual, that is deep, that is you don't even know you might con- you you don't know what you might do during this a beautiful ritual. One of Andy's candles. I'm trying to think. What? Well, oh, love myself. Oh, how go? Oh my goodness. I would. I would totally do that with yeah, some incense. Lots, I even put things in yeah. my can candles that you can incorporate into your jewelry, right? Like those little skulls, they're beads. Oh, yes. The evil eye charms, like they're beads. So all of those things too are a part of that. But even your own jewelry, start with, first of all, not only, you know, start with spiritually cleansing it when you bring it into your home, start to also learn about the metals themselves and the best way to yeah. care for them. Because they'll they'll also speak to you just like other things. So for instance, I'll give you a good example. There are ways where I'm sure like the tools that you work with, you work with tarot cards. If your tarot cards get ripped or torn or dirty, right? There is a process for you that when you get through reading, you spiritually cleanse them. You care for them in such a way to extend their practice, right? How like you just don't take our tarot cards home from reading for 100 people and throw them in a bag and just going about her business. There's certain care that she takes to those tools. Same thing with do jewelry. Learn what it takes to take care of silver versus gold. I tell folks, if you're buying all this fancy jewelry, you should also have a little pack or wipes of something that is formulated for it to cleanse it. So learn about it. 
also learned its durability, right? For me, the silver that I use, like I know the durability of the types of silver that I use. I know like gold is is very kind of delicate versus things that I can use every day. I think that's important in your kind of practice. There's jewelry that literally I used to grow it up like in my 20s. There's jewelry that like silver bracelets that I slept in every day that I showered in. I don't know about you, but I showered in, right? Like I washed with my sterling silver jewelry because it was fine jewelry. I thought it was fine. What I never thought about is by taking it off and disconnecting it from my body, right? That means whatever energy was attached to that piece of jewelry. Because moon jewelry and silver is receptive jewelry is now I'm sleeping with it. I'm putting it in my bed. It's always touching my being. Think about who you slept with when you were in your 20s. Think about how many different households you were in in your 20s. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Like generally the only two rings that yeah. I keep on my body at all times, even because when I see people who are like with waist beads, like they're supposed to be on me. I, I understand that's an African tradition and all that. And if you are African and that's what you want to participate on, that's fine. You better yeah, find a way to clean them bad boys yeah. with them on your being. And I don't know about taking something that I'm dragging all throughout the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah. Where I clean out and that's my stuff. The only two rings that I wear that I literally keep yeah. on or at all times are two silver commitment rings that I made to myself that I add on every year that I have been a spiritual being. Every year I make one of these silver bands and add them onto my hands. Now they have a spiritual and commitment significance to me since the year I started making jewelry. Were you going to tell me that, but you're going to just drop that news on me, like on the podcast? I would have loved to have known that. Well, it's it's a personal oh, no. It's a personal thing okay. for me. It's Usually I have all my rings on. These are the only two that I sleep in. But they're also rings where I wash my hands yeah. every day. Yeah. They move. I have space in between them. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So like I could, I could, I spiritually cleanse my hands and my bodies before I get yeah. to bed. So think about that with your jewelry. Also think about the makers of your jewelry. Like, yes, we can be, bring jewelry off the street and we can infuse it with intention. How do we do that? I will actually put certain jewelry that I have. So like you buy a carnelian, right? Carnelian is focus, strength, vitality. I will put it on my altar. I will smoke cleanse it. I will put it on my altar. I will infuse my intentions into it through prayer, meditation. I wear it and use it and touch it when I'm meditating, just like we do skull magic or candle magic. I may use smoke magic to speak to and infuse it. I will leave it on my ancestor altar to ask my ancestors to recognize it as a tool to speak and to help me amplify, right? To help me receive. Those are some ways that I charge up and use that jewelry. There are also ways that I think you have to, like we talked about metals a little bit. When you're working with different gemstones, when you're cleansing and using them, same things I would say to those, learn how to cleanse them, learn how they like to be cleansed. But those are different ways you can charge them up. When you wear them on your person, like with sex magic, I was telling Halaki, I have some harnesses that I wear, right? I have a back tattoo. Love my back. That tattoo is stunning. And when I say that, I'm not saying that like with false confidence. Like I really pick two artists that I really love. Yeah, they, I they are stunning. These artists. Yep. It's a combination of designs. And so I don't say that like because like, ooh, I'm a bad because I am. Let's, let's clarify and set a baseline. I'm the, I'm the baddest <laughs> bitch out there. But I say that as a celebration of these two yes. artists, right? Like it's, it's a really I'm proud of this piece of art. It's a, it's a and it was painful and I it put a lot of body commitment into it. So it stretches like from one shoulder across my back and wraps around and kind of grabs the top part of my booty. When I wear backless dresses, I have designed a necklace that you can wear frontwards where it falls right where your cleavage is, right? So there's a junction in the necklace. So it draws your eye to what, Q? Your de- decolletage. Your decolletage. Yeah, as decolletage. I like to say when the old folks your are bosoms. in the room. Your, your, <laughs> your, yeah, like yes, it, your, it, your, your, yes. your, your bosom. But you can switch it around and in the back, like it actually drapes. A lot. I designed it to that be that way where it also accents my your back, back is my this is way too much information but my back is my erogenous zone it's like a major erogenous zone for me and those oh my gosh those shades are so beautiful like I don't even I love wearing my hair down I literally sweep it to the side when I was wearing that chain all the time and when I do wear it going down the back it, it literally turns on something special I in made me. some ass chains yeah. that Halicu has that are beaded that do the same thing yeah. like they fall down your back they're they're made of certain stones and I've incorporated like citrine in the masked one you have. Like mine is made out of black stones, that, but I have a silver ring in the middle of that beaded harness, right? Because sterling uh, is shaped like the full moon, 
right? So it's my representation of full moon energy and very powerful energy if you're a witch. But it also situates in between your bosom is also situated where? Right over your heart right? So it amplifies these certain, you know, and it also becomes a portal where I actually can like shoot my intentions through that when I wear it at whoever I'm singling in on. So that's a little dark goddess energy too that I use that chain for. So that's, you know, that's sex magic. That's, that's all those things, but it's also a wonderful chain, right? If I didn't imbue it or use it for those uses, it would still be a beautiful piece of jewelry that I wear. So those are things, malas, like our traditional meditation tool that a lot of times now you can get made of different gemstones. I charge them on my altar. I wear them, especially like when I'm in workshop. So like I have one made of tiger's eye, which is all about masculine confidence and projection, right? And to being an authority figure. So I wear that tiger's eye mala. I use it to meditate that morning, what I want to project. And all during my workshops, like I'll pick brown in black color themes so I could work that mala in or you can have it around your wrist or even in your pocket even, right? So there's different ways to also incorporate gemstones into your wardrobe to use them for different purposes. We carry all types of different gemstone malas on our website. So you can research like the gemstone properties of what you want to use those malas for. People add charms to them. I think that's cool too. In hoodoo, we have a lot of charms that have very specific meaning. One of my chains, I have a key on it, right? It is my road opening chain. All of my Aligua, Halicu will help correct all of my Spanish pronunciation because I am a black. <laughs> yeah, I am a Mississippi woman that learned Spanish, 12th grade Mississippi Spanish. Our Spanish was pretty people. good so for getting in from Mississippi public school. Let's have to Your say. Spanish was pretty good. My Spanish was not pretty good. Okay. I just was not, I was not fully committed. But you took calculus to, before to say, yeah. So I did, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, so I languages take calculus. just was not my thing. Yeah. And I think there's a certain amount of confidence and air of drama and all about me it takes to learn languages, like to really appreciate the beauty of speaking a language that is all you. I hope I have a Leo in my house. I like the way I sound and look when I pronounce things. I hope my Leo loves languages. (laughs) I suck at them, but I, I, my pronunciation is always good and, voca- and vocab. But, you know, that ch- that chain is red, black, and white, yeah. right? It has a key symbol that hangs on the end of it when I have certain uh, mojo bag charms that have certain symbols on it, yeah. right? So you can also use those symbols and those different charms that you have to also provide protection. I have a bone set charm that I wear. It's got a snake on it. It's got a cowrie shell. It's got a skull that represents my ancestors, right? When I wear the blue skull on there, it activates a set of intentions I have for communication and being open. When I wear the white skull, it activates, you know, protection and, you know, keeps me safe. So there's also different uses that you can and and things you can infuse into your chains. But I think it's also important to know the people who you're creating your thing, creating your jewelry. Like for me, for instance, yeah. you now know as a jewelry maker, I've sat down here in a podcast having a conversation with my sh- sister. Like when you see the things on the website, you're going to be like, Andy talked about that in the podcast. She talked about why yeah. she made that. Even though the description says it's a bone set set, I know what that white one's for. I know what that blue one's yeah. for. I can set those intentions now too. You can go purchase it knowing that the person who made your jewelry made it. So that is going to be my statement I'm going to make you before I get on my little soapbox about like when you go into... um. TJ Maxx, which I love, or you go into Marshall's and you start, because you ever go in there and see like the evil eye or spiritual jewelry, just like when you go into um, Spencer's or somewhere in the mall and you're like, oh, that's a tarot card. That's not even what that means. Girl, they still got Spencer's though. Do they girl, still they have still that? have Spencer's. Um, they don't. Girl, Where yeah, the hell could you go find the Spencer's? The mall. There's a Spencer's in my mall in San Antonio of 7,000 million people. The next time I'm there, I'm going to have to insist that you take me just to be in there. It is a hot mess, and they have like a whole witch's section. Another place that's like that. A lot of witch's section in Spencer's. The new version of Spencer's ain't nothing but a hot topic. You've been in hot topic. Same thing. Okay. So they got (laughs) tarot cards and and hot topics. I don't know what it'd be, but you know, it's an urban outfitters too. So And I consider those, I consider those like the print rescue. I don't rescue the candle. From Spencer's, just because I was like, Look you at told this. me about rescue and socks and cups from the uh from the party the Halloween shop. I that pops picked up an evil eye necklace from TJ Maxx just because y'all don't know what to do with it. Let me just remove it out y'all's way before somebody <laughs> do something terrible. Somebody with it. T- <laughs> Sometimes it's just out of pity. I tell you, literally, there are some things I'm like, take this money so I can keep somebody from hurting themselves. 
Y'all got this in goodwill, and this literally is somebody's black magic hoodoo doll that's tied up in a box. Just, I'm going to take it and go put it in the garbage can outside for y'all because y'all don't know no better. Girl, your nieces that it. like to thrift be, your nieces that like to thrift be wearing me out. Like, Girl. Reese, something good happens to her, and she's like, Mommy, can we go to the garage sale? And I'm like, Yeah, baby, but mommy's going to put this through a hole. <laughs> I'm going to have to put this through a hole. You can't wear none of this for a week. <laughs> like, until my week is I would never forget, it y'all. Is. It was one Christmas. I know we what kind of misery this. and tragedy you trailing into the house. <laughs> we got to the <laughs> White Rabbit in my hometown, which is really like a vintage place. that place. Oh, my God, How yes. Like you kept falling and over. Just, look at all the antique tins. I love these. I was like, girl, all I can physically think about is Did like I buy one? No, because who was right there with me? slaves and trapped in them. <laughs> And them flower boxes. I wouldn't have had them antique boxes in my house to say. And Alex was like, okay, Andy would let us buy down. nothing in it. Would let us buy a single thing. Every time I pictured you, don't touch that. Don't touch that. <laughs> Leave it alone. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Andy just <laughs> would let your big sister spend a dollar. <laughs> like, and that, and you know, there are some people who are gonna have those strong feelings when they go into places like that. And I suggest you listen to them because I have also been into places that are curated by black people who are selling black vintage stuff that came from black homes. And I feel absolutely okay touching every old flower can. My my grandma had a hundred year flower cans in her house. I ain't feel funny about touching them. So listen to your intention about things. And I think that's why it's also important to know the jewelry maker who is making your things. You should know the kind of, like there are going to be some things out in the world that were given to us that we can't control how they came to us. And we absolutely can get them ready to be in our houses and we can prepare them a certain way. Then there are going to be things where we're out there seeking. Oh, I think I love that. I love this thing Andy talked about. I think I want to wear something like that. You now know me. We we're, we have built a relationship. You can ask any good jewelry maker should also be able to communicate with you and answer questions about their products and things. But also, they'll also help teach you good practices of even if you don't buy from me, there are some amazing indigenous and African-American jewelry makers out there. There are some amazing people making some great handmade products. You just need to know who you buying stuff from. I don't buy genuine native, look, look at my genuine uh, Native American stuff in, in context from white people named Feather. I don't. D- y'all can talk about me if you want to, because to me, that doesn't make sense. It just, does, it, it's not all mathing. The same way I don't buy a lot of like, you know, I'm not going to see someone who is completely not of African culture. I'm not going to watch someone who's Brazilian sell me, you know, Senegalese earrings either. I think things have to make sense. But if I go into Oakland and see a young designer that is studying Senegalese beading, who wants to sell their products, and they can tell you this is my interpretation of what that beading looks like. That's great. That's amazing. I want artists to take their interpretations in ways of how we make things. But I think it's also important to, to understand the people who are bringing um, the jewelry to you, right? That understand that they have talked to people. Like I sell malas on my website. Halakie will let you know, I have met the daughter of the man who makes them. He understands that he's making malas for mass consumption. You understand? Then he that he's also very clear about what he sells and what he doesn't sell, right? What he allows us to sell retail and what he doesn't. And I also don't try to bargain him down from what he has, the value that he has put on his goods. So I think it's important that we're also participating in an ethical marketplace around your jewelry too, because look, jewelry carries intention. So I say that a lot too about fast fashion too. Like just just be mindful of where your jewelry's coming from. Yeah. I uh, this is such a um I love this topic. It is so juicy. Um nothing I we were all wearing jewelry like before we began our spiritual practice. But I tell you, it's one of these places where you can go deep very easily from the mini ritual recipe that Andy just gave us earlier about, you know, go to your jewelry box, like look at what you have, create a ritual around it, light a candle, have incense burning, cleanse it. If there's, if there's old stuff on it, like old energies on it, like, you know, think about what you'd like to give away. Think about what you'd like to leave as an heirloom. Look at what your ancestors- How it makes you feel when you wear it. 
I, my perspective has changed so much, but in the best way when it comes to choosing sacred adornments, like one of the things that I'm wearing right now, so simple. It's just an, you know, like it's just an evil eye, but Andy and I found some beautiful ones. Um, and also when she talks about the malas, like Lord have mercy. First of all, when y'all see the malas on her website, www.tallulahoyo.com, like they're so beautiful, but I literally, my back starts hurting. Like when I, <laughs> Because I think about we were there for out, like we were in that stand for hours. Like once Andy finally found it, she remembered seeing it. It took us like forty five minutes to find. It. I take that back. It took me a long time to figure out where it was. Andy knew exactly where to go back and find it. So that's that little memory. Like whatever Andy has on that website, she has made or she has chosen with so much work and so much intention. But even like, but this, um, uh, I bought an evil eye set. There were some beautiful mother of pearl and opal um, earrings, like this necklace. I I don't wear this because it goes with the fact that I'm wearing blue. I have this on like right now because I'm a sock. Y'all know I'm a sports mom. I've gone through a decade of being a sports mom. And so there are some things I've learned about different environments. I wear this for a reason. It's intentioned. It is charmed. It has been a anointed with oils. It's special because it was chosen with my sister. It already had power because of when we bought it, the place we bought it. And I wear it with intention because one of the things that I have learned from shepherding the first daughter through the worlds of like elite women's and young women's sports is the hate and the racism, the hater hate and the racism. I do everything I can. I got two sayings. Narks to be out here narking. Haters be out here hating. <laughs> haters be out here hating. Why you expect them to do something different wear- than what they're supposed to do? So in this case, this is just a real practical, pretty, attractive, attracting, because I want you to look at it. I want you to see it. And I want you to know that I chose it with intention. It's pretty. I just didn't draw a bullseye on my clavicle. I could have done that. But no, I want y'all to see it. The one that I chose, the one that I wear says a lot about me. Um, it's a little, it's a little blinged out. Like it's a little, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit flashy, but it still does the job. I want you to see it. And I want you to see it and think, oh, I know what that is. And almost always, <laughs> I rarely get, oh, that's so pretty. So that being, I saying, rarely get that. Normally, I see it in people. This is a great time for a caution. Yeah. Once you charm and you infuse your jewelry, like Hallie Q is very aware of what she uses that for. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. know, be careful. Yes. Don't wear that to the crowd. And it works. She don't wear that to the crowd yes. on the weekend to be killing hoes. No. Or when you're trying exactly. to have sexy times. Yeah, when you're trying to have sexy times with your husband, you don't want to do that, but it's show on for today. It's <laughs> sure on for today. It lays on my ancestor altar. It lays on my ancestor altar until I have to quote unquote suit up. It's very intentional. When I read, when I read for people, there are special rings that I wear. I feel like it's very important for me as a tarot reader to take good care of my hands. My hands are kind of part of how my clairsentience work, how my work with the tarot cards work. I have certain um, rings when I reach certain milestones. There's a beautiful antique citrine um, that I bought for myself, I believe, like last Halloween. That's in an Art Deco style. I have no idea. I don't even like Art Deco like that, but I find it very beautiful and very appealing. Um and it is reminiscent of a time of, you know, of my ancestors. And I wear those if I want to bring in abundance, if I want today to be a day where I make a, you know, if I'm doing something like working at a, you know, if I'm doing a pop-up someplace where I have to do a lot of, you know, I have to, I'm making a special appearance and I'm doing like a lot of readings. Yeah. Like I may also wear, you know, I may wear something that's protective too. Cause I'm, you know, I'm being a conduit to like a lot of different people. And if I'm trying to bring in abundance, if I want that to be a great day where I want tons of people coming in the pop-up, there are certain rings that I wear. I have a wonderful, like that beautiful little antique art deco, like green, it's a green onyx, I think. So, oh, and also my favorite, oh my God, my new favorite talisman, Andy, that's still, that I'm still charging on my altar. And I don't, I'm not going to say I finesse this out of Andy because can't nobody finesse shit out of Andy. It's really better to just like if you're in close relationship, just, just say you like it for. and I'll like, just, just you with it because I have because I have to unwrap or just I have to buy unwrap it. myself from it no. sometimes, but absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But the second I saw it on her on Instagram, I was like, oh, okay, you didn't put that on the website. So big sister can't buy it. So I'm gonna have to wait till you bring it to my house and then I'm gonna have to 
And then I'm gonna have to figure out a way to just ask you That's for it. That's the baby booty, y'all. Actually, it's so she took the pretty. prototype. I've got to make another one this weekend to sh- to take a picture of and put it on the website. And this but, reminds um, me, yeah. So the, it, and those I custom make. I hand make those for and you. And these and and this brings in the card of the day. There's so many different ways you can like you take your sacred ornaments and use them. This is our card of the day, our tarot card of the day that I pulled, and this is the three of cups. It's my new favorite piece of jewelry. It's a little red Buddha. It literally looks like a Buddha carved out of a Jolly Rancher with this beautiful intentional, it's not random anyways, beautiful beading. I convinced Andy to let me have it. It's my, um, it's a necklace of sisterhood. When I want to feel the loving support of my beautiful sisters, especially Andy, if there's something I want to communicate to Andy, or if I want to, you know, I want her to feel like my heart space because Andy and I like as close as we are. I don't think I'm closer to anybody on this earth than Andy. No one knows me the way my sister does. Are you making more of them? Yeah. Thanks. It's a piece of jewelry that I wear. I feel close to her. I feel it's something that she made. It already has so much power and so much energy. It's one of the few pieces of jewelry. I'm like, I don't know if I want to cleanse this. I want to feel like close to her. And it's one of my favorite pieces. And it's a powerful, it's a powerful piece. When I need the power and the support of my sisters, but I can't be on the phone or on the group text with them all day, that's something that... um that I will use and I'll put on and we'll share, we'll share those. Um, We'll share those with y'all. And it just reminds me of our card, three of cups, the magic that is created when people that you truly are in friendship, you love, not love relationship. I would say in come in a like platonic sisterly friendship, sister circle, home girl space. It's a picture of three women raising their cups. They're beautifully dressed. Their their heads are laden with laurels and fruit. They're wearing their finest robes. And they're almost like they're dancing in a circle, like that beautiful painting, the rites of, you know, the rites of spring. It's about that magic that happens when sisterhood, laughter, merriment, merrymaking comes together and you make this beautiful magic. So it makes sense that this would be the card that I pulled Andy, I think I have one last question for you, and then we'll then we'll get ready to say goodbye to everybody. What is your favorite? Because Andy is Andy is in that beautiful space. It's almost like the 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 tarot card of her sun sign of the zodiac, um, Sagittarius, which is associated with temperance. Andy is one of these people that has to have a foot in different. She's got a foot in the spiritual waters. And she's got a foot on terra firma. She's 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 working out in the spirit realm, like creating all this beautiful intention jewelry and candles for you and working on her practice and doing this healing work through making these amazing objects and talking about them on the podcast. But she's also like, you know, she's got a kind of a big, important job out in the corporate world. Andy, what is your favorite thing to wear when you got to suit up? When you've either got some gigantic big presentation or you got to, you really got to gird yourself. Like not that you're going to war, but you're, you're gearing up. Like what are your, what are your favorite things? Okay. Let me clarify for you ladies now, because we done talked about the boss witch candle. We done talked about how I boss witch. Yeah. That do-do-do. Give me that do-do-do. I mean, I wear, that's <laughs> I what I wear. <laughs> Oh, fair enough. Because to me, you well, when I think about going out to work and I'm I'm thinking about my daily job, right? That is the thing that I am doing because it brings income into my life. Now, you know, my candles and those things, those are like my passion and my side hustle. So I have a tendency when I'm promoting and doing those things, I, I usually wear stuff that has more of a creator's spirit, right? Like my turquoise, my, you know, amethyst, the stuff that is really kind of relating my ancestors. When I am going into work every day, like me, for me personally to influence, I like my peridot. It's it's a green color. It has a tendency to be soothing to others, but yet I infuse it kind of with that boss witch energy, which y'all know is about not just give me that money, but how can I focus and strategize on not only what do I want from this job? How is it best going to maximize what I want from abundance and how it's going to do it in a way that I can fit on my own terms and authentically. That's what being a boss witch is about. Like when people ask like, what is that Megan the Stallion? And what is that, you know, Beyonce energy? It, whatever you got to say about them being a part of capitalism or whatever. They also had the resources to make dreams come true for other people. They make projects on their own terms. They don't let other people define for them how they're going to move in their business place. I use those two people as entertainment examples because most of y'all understand that energy like from an entertainment perspective. You know, in my type of energy, the type of women I see and emulate at my jobs are the ones that put it like this. They ain't got to hustle at their job. 
they are just showing up to be them and people may pay them shit tons of money to be the authentic self and then they go home. You shouldn't have to be working harder all the time. You should be working smarter. You should be working at a job that amplifies who you naturally are so you're not killing yourself every day for that job. It should be the one that's comfortable enough to afford you the kind of lifestyle you want to live. You know, I tell people like that kind of boss switch energy, if I had to describe it to myself, the same money I was making three years ago, I start burning them candles. I make at home, tending my own garden. You get what I'm saying? Working it. I, now that the pandemic is over, I still continue to do that because I got a boss switch attitude. That's what I asked for. That's what I wanted. That's what I manifested. So for me, Peridot is a great one for that. I also love matching the energy of the room. So that's me when I'm trying to project when I want to be powerful in the room in the strategic part of my job. I'm also a teacher. I'm teaching other people how to step into our culture at work and how to embrace each other. And we are a people focused company. So how do you build trust? right? How do you build trust in a room? Well, it's by being vulnerable and sharing yourself. So when I am in workshop, I have tried to find ways to incorporate my beliefs and culturally who I am in a way that is very work appropriate. So I find that I've always hear people like when they see how I dress in a room, they'll say, you really create a great energy in the room. Like I want my participants to know that I structure workshops a certain way. Candy's here, water's here. You have stuff that you need because I want you to be comfortable, but I also wear things that are comfortable. So when I'm teaching, I'm not wearing three inch heels because that's what power folks wear at my job. I save that for the office, but like the colors that I wear are soothing. I wear a lot of Oya rainbow kind of coordinated colors. So I wear red a lot when I'm first beginning workshops because it projects power. I also wear a lot of jewelry that is culturally significant to me. When I am um, teaching in a room, I like to wear a lot of, like Halakie talks about that, uh, baby Buddha necklace. I have some Senegalese beaded earrings I got in Oakland from a young man who makes those in that tradition. I've got some Yoruban earrings I bought on a trip, on another trip in our program where I went to go to the African American Museum of Dallas. So like those earrings have a lot of cultural significance to me. I usually have a like a uniform that I'm comfortable with. So I wear big, airy clothes, but I'm very intentional about my color choices. So with gemstones, during that week to set that tone to make people feel comfortable, I generally have a tendency to lean towards silver because that really is about communication. It's about being able to express emotion because I want that to come through to people, our intentionality about things. But I also wear things like tiger's eye. I use the color reds and bright oranges because they also project power. They also project knowledge. So red for power, orange for knowledge and wisdom, right? So I also use a lot of color magic in my work when I'm actually projecting that intentional work. So for red and orange, I like to wear a lot of carnelian. That's a stone that can either, you can either find it where it looks like a really deep red or a really bright orange. Carnelian is also a stone that focuses on passion because I love for my passion around my teaching work to come through and vitality, life, excitement, because I want my young folks who are really starting to get into their jobs for the first time or my older professionals, if they're getting into this new role, I want them to understand the vitality and opportunity that this is providing for them. In the summer, I love a lot of yellow because that's a road opening color. But for me, like yellow, I don't know, yellow makes me a little bit, makes me feel like makes me look a little bit sick when you talk about color. Like it makes me look sallow. So I love to project yellow. Through Shade. Like, um, well, no, you're a different skin tone for me. I'm a little, you know, I'm a little bit browner than I you. Color like, my you look hair amazing color. I know. I know. with yellow blonde on here because I, I don't I, have I, your I don't have the same skin tone as you but I, I look much better with and dark I would, hair. I would not be able to pull off Andy's like midnight. Yeah hair, like I have darker you know? skin. It's a it's a different kind of skin tone pro undertone that we have. But when I have to pull in yellow, I love wearing oh God, your manifesting stone. Get the shit you want. Like I, I wear a lot of um uh, you know what I'm fixing. What's on the tip of my tongue? I can't say. You know what I'm sitting here thinking of. I see the stone. Am I? Why can't I see it? Cute. Your favorite uh, citrine. Describe it. Citrine. Describe it. Citrine. Citrine, citrine, citrine. is what okay. I wear, and I yep. match citrine with a lot of gold. Like citrine with silver is actually a very good combination if you've never tried it. Because when you talk about moon energy and especially like full moon goddess energy, that matched with manifestation, mm, good shit. It just doesn't. We don't visually put together 
light yellow and silver. We put together yellow and gold, but gold has a lot of rich abundance, luxury. Um, it has a very sexual, seductive kind of side to gold too, depending on, on kind of what you have. So it, it, it fits very well with a uh, citrine. I will tell you, I have a tendency not to wear a lot of citrine where I'm in rooms with big people. I have a tendency to wear citrine where I am going to be the center of attention and only my intentions matter. When I teach, when I wear a lot of citrine where I'm having to share that energy, I really think citrine as an an amplifier of our self-love and really kind of what drives us. It really should be a stone that you really are using to amplify your personal energy. Um, But when you start talking about wishing stones in a room with a lot of energy and pushing out that energy to be reflected back at you, that I don't, I don't ever want other people to have the power of citrine to be able to manifest things I want. I like to be the person who's the point of reference. You get what I'm saying? With citrine, does, if it doesn't make sense to you, we can yes, talk about it later. Yes. But you want to be the driver with citrine. Yeah. You don't want to be reflecting it out in a room like, oh, let's all get our citrine out and talk about it. No, that's chaotic, crazy. Everybody mm-hmm. don't need to have a wish. Or what they want to manifest, yeah. like all those, <laughs> all those. Or you don't want to attract that to you, exactly. yeah. Or you don't want to, it's, you don't want to receive all that, like. Yeah, it's it's, but there are certain energies that are okay to bounce around a room, like joy, happiness, inspiration, right? Like there are some of those things that it doesn't matter if we have a lot of that energy. There are certain energy that we just don't. You know, the same thing when I wear a lot of red in the room, I encourage wearing a lot of red in the room, but I encourage them on the days I'm wearing red. I really encourage them. Those are on our business forward days. So they're actually wearing a lot of muted color, right? So I think those are also layers of how to think about what you wear. But yeah, Q, that was a long list. I have the peridododo. Uh, para, para get that dough, as I like to call it in my head. Um, tiger's eye is another one that projects confidence. Um, if you're speaking yeah. in front of folks and that's not a strength for you, I always suggest that one. Carnelian to project your passion. Uh, but by all means, y'all know I love turquoise. Turquoise is an amazing stone to support communication, like clear understanding and communication. Um, when I have met- Mercury in retrograde, I just had to have had to give a whole workshop during Mercury and retrograde. I wore turquoise every single day that I spoke. Yeah. And I wore it close to me and like incorporated it into the clothing that I was wearing. And I mm-hmm. used a lot of spiritual em- energy too for clarity, right? And understanding. Yeah. So there's also ways that you can use your jewelry to direct you for yeah. the time that you're in. Now, does everybody in my meeting appreciate Mercury and retrograde? Even though Q, I was super happy. Like there's, there was like three of us that were into astrology that I picked on ball real quick. Yeah. So I like to make my rooms yeah. accessible. She said something about being a, a fire sign. And I was like, fire signs, just as I was doing something on, yeah. on my computer. Yeah, so yeah. she came to commit, yeah. connect to me. And I'm going to say this to y'all, for you all that are struggling to find a way to do this at work. And when you're feeling challenged on, should I wear this? Like, should I take mm-hmm. this risk? To, and I'll tell you, I, I want to tell you this story about what happened to me, Q, because this is the reason why we do this. And Q reminds me of this all the time. She came to me afterwards and she goes, I wanted to say something to you. You have amazing jewelry and you really do a good job. I could tell you, you the ama- the energy you create in the room is really amazing. And she goes, and I said, well, I'm a jewelry maker. You'll learn that on my slide when I present myself. I, I really do use a lot of what I do to create that kind of energy in the room. So thank you for sharing that with me. Well, she came up the next day and she had, it was our casual day and she had her outfit on. Girl, when I tell you that this girl had a Beyonce, po- you know how like people who have really long, she had long blonde hair, but she'd done that puff ball thing all down her ponytail like Beyonce does in her concert. I be loving y'all. And she, you know, she was a fuller figure, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, girl. She had on these high-waisted like teal. Girl, this color, you know how I feel about teal. She had on these teal like uh, wonderfully like wide-legged kick pants and like a cute little white shirt. And she had on this beautifully colorful like chandelier earrings. And you could, you could just see her confidence when she came. She already had this great personality. She was She's a she's a front of the house person, right? 
So she comes in the room. She goes, this is the time. She goes, I really love that you set the energy that way the yesterday because this is really the time we're at training where I can really show my personality and what I wear in my jewelry. And I just complimented her. Girl, once you really take the challenge to be yourself in a room and other people, especially if your job is to influence and to help develop other people and you see them get that connection in a room and they, and, and she was a Leo too. She, I later find out her fire side was a Leo. Cause she basically said, now that you gave me the, okay, of course. How, how we go. <laughs> of it was. Here's of day course two. it was. What she was like, got day three. She was like, she was like, hello, Andy. I felt your energy day and I decided that? to match it. Girl, I was oh, like, well, bitch, so now happy. I got a challenge. Like, I was just coming yes. to work today. Now, like, even just her energy that she unlocked completely changed all the room. Then then I heard her talking yeah. to another girl that was over in the room that had purple hair. And I, you know, I just made a comment to her. I said, you know, I love purple. It's my color. It's my favorite color. And yay on you for making great fashion choices. And so that next day, yes. and then we start, like, she, we start talking about CoStar and how it cusses us out. And so you create this community, mm-hmm. right? Yes. So yes. I also. Sometimes in- it's a beacon. It truly is. Like, sometimes what you're wearing when you, like Andy said, like, I love the way Andy also, like, I, I threw out these questions that kind of a little bit. I want to not stomp it, not, not stump Andy, but I, I love, like, cause she writes, we we're just verbal. We love verbal repartee like I know that she's gonna rise and elevate and take it but you remember how she talked about like my first question was how do you da, da, da. she's like what is your intention and I was like way to take it back always to the fundamentals like and that was her intention to be welcoming to identify talent and god damn it if talent didn't stand up and say hi like <laughs> like here I am thank you for that energy and meeting it it was a it's a it's a be it truly was a beacon what I don't know about crystals could feel Several, several books, but thank God I have sisters around me between Andy and our sister Megan. By the way, check out Megan at the Jungle Gym on Instagram. She does lives on Fridays. And I'm going to go ahead and say, like, pepper her with questions. Ask Megan questions about, like, you know, I don't think Megan doesn't, I don't think Megan sells like Joey, but I know she she's into crystals and she will help y'all with your crystal journey. Ask her. And look at the miracle, not the miracle, but this beautiful, subtle magic of that story that is beautiful. Um, how does she end up the week? <laughs> She's just, you know, like this is the beginning of her journey with me. So it's a room that was selected because they are all rising stars, but how we choose to show up, right? We, I know how people, muggles, right? Think about astrology. We think, we know what it is. Like think about in that room to be three women in a male dominated industry that might have an interest or something that is not necessarily typical feeling okay to have that energy in a room that's centered on leadership because they're all going, they're being trained to go out and to be leaders of these businesses in our organization. Imagine if we, would we have been able to have that conversation five years ago? Would we be able to, would they be able to have that conversation today if I wasn't healed, confident, living my authentic self and knew the power that is in locked in those moments where people get to find community. Am I telling you to go stand up at your next meeting and say, yes, hi, my name is Andy and I'm a Sagittarius. No, you need to read the room that you're in. No, that's not what we <laughs> you need. Well, you need to read the room that yeah. you're in. You may absolutely have a room where you can go in and do that. And that's fine. And if so, and that's the calling and that's what you feel to do. Great. But then there are going to be certain rooms you can't, but how can you create community? around that. Like that's what I'm t- sometimes there are times yeah. I walk into these rooms and I can see what women are wearing that will let me know. Yep. On the back of my iPad, I have like an evil eye sticker that's on there that I've seen people look at me and go, mm-hmm. I know these other people don't know what that Florida mm-hmm. water sticker means on the back of your iPad, but I do. It's just a way to help people be yeah. comfortable and identify. So I also tell people to take a look spiritual, like jewelry and how people adorn themselves can tell you a lot about people too. Or what they don't know. Because me and Hallie, oh my God, you remember Mm. that time we walked into that tent from Arizona with the Turquoise King and we saw that woman covered and all that stuff. And I was like, oh girl, the dread. This don't seem right. Yeah, no, this ain't right. Yeah. It was like, let's hurry up and get out of here. The more she talked, the more upsetting it got. Two booths Um, over. It was the same tent is a mother daughter, right? It was like a son, mom, son. They're gem cutters, they're stone cutters doing that. Oh, and then all this chaos of the turquoise king are these two mother folks, mother son team. Yeah. 
that know their craft. They know what they're doing. They know they may be operating in the chaos of this industry, but they're doing their work. Like look for people like that. And as you're out and about in the world too, also I will always encourage, look for, you know, talk to jewelry makers about what they're making. You don't have to just purchase yeah. something from a big box store. When you see people yeah. that are out like at street market fairs, you know, these local collectives, look for non-traditional places where people are making their jewelry and trying to mm-hmm. introduce it and share it to you for the first time. Because it's also, I think yeah. it's great to know the stories and the names behind people who are handling your stuff. Andy, can I, as, as we get ready to say goodbye, I hope y'all have enjoyed this conversation on amulets and talismans. I don't know if we tried to record this like a couple of months ago and we weren't able to like get it out, but we're so glad to finally be able to get it out. And y'all know we nerd, we nerds over here. We, you know, the first magical realms and Andy and I were exploring were the realm of books for lots of reasons, like for lots of reasons as children. And one of my favorite books, now this is not necessarily like a book on hoodoo or coming from the hoodoo tradition. But it's one of my favorites because y'all know I love glamour work. I love glamour magic. And I do love to charm and use sacred adornments. And also I'm using that term, my my colleague in the intuitive space and a creator on Twitter that I absolutely love. Her name is, um, I think her Twitter handle is Thickamus Prime. So, you know, when I first saw that, like I loved her. And and I think I think I heard her use the term sacred adornments. And it's as I just died and have been resurrected. Say it again. You got to pause to to give. Thickamus Prime, girl. Thickamus Prime. I know I'm not lying. People who put the thought into those names. Yeah. We got to give them the pause behind yeah. that that they deserve. Say it again. Thickamus Prime was the Twitter handle that I first discovered. <laughs> this wonderful woman. Bravo, Denise ma'am. Kidd. She's brilliant. Bravo, ma'am. She, she's amazing. I would love to interview her for Boss Witch. So I'm putting that out there in the universe that I'm going to uh, interview this amazing woman who's not only like a theologian, but she's a healer. She works in the um, abuse recovery space. She's a card reader. Like she's into it. She's just amazing. So she's where like one of the places I first heard that term sacred adornments. And I'm so glad we're finally able to get this episode out. Um, I'd like to dedicate it in some degree to her. But one of the books that I absolutely love and that kind of goes into charming different items is a book called Glamour Magic. It's by Deborah Castellano, The Richcraft Revolution to Get What You Want. So again, like it's not coming from Hoodoo tradition or from a Hoodoo writer, but I really love this book. And I just wanted to give like a tiny little um, recommendation there, like as we leave. And we love y'all like play cousins. We love delivering all of this magical audio goodness directly into your lovely ear holes. So take this delicious moment to tap the subscribe button so that you never miss a single episode of the new Hoodoo Podcast. But if this week's episode really delighted or inspired you, we want to hear from you. Tell us what's up. We know there's a question you've been dying to ask us. And as much as y'all know we love to talk, we know you know how excited we are to answer it. Email us at pillarsporchpath at gmail.com and tell us what's on that magical, mystical mind of yours. You know that we want to hear from you, especially about what magical topics you'd like for us to introduce and explore in our fabulous fifth season. Of course, follow us on social media. That's where you get to see the real silliness and foolishness and fuckery and actually fun, interesting, exciting things that we're doing and we have to offer. All of our handles and links are down there in the show notes. We want you to join our new home on the Geneva app. This is a podcast brand new and ultra fabulous free community that Andy and I are creating just for you. This is where you can find our pre-show shenanigans and all of the extra special content that we're reviewing just for you. And for you, darling divas that just want to say thank you for all of the magical goodness that we deliver to y'all, did you know that you can buy us a coffee by clicking on the sparkly coffee link right down there in the show notes? Okay, all of you boss witches, heavenly hoodoos, and sexy AF sirens and spellcasters, I miss you already, but I know I'm going to see you next week, same day, same time, on the new Hoodoo.